I love these little Radio Shack cassette decks. So when I saw this one at the thrift store, I knew I had to get it. Even though it's filthy, and when I tried it out with a tape, it would not play or fast forward or rewind. So you'll probably need new belts, but the price sticker on it is $6.99. But they had the 25% off sale on it, so the total I paid, including tax, was $5.59. So for five dollars and change, I got myself a cassette player and hopefully we can get it working. This model was introduced in 1989 along with its big brother, the Auto Reverse version with Dolby, which was twice the price. But here it is, the Realistic SCP-31 for $49.95. Available October 30th, 1988. Ideal for tight spaces. They say it's a low-cost way to add cassette capability to your existing stereo system or use in your office or dorm room where space is tight. Metal and chrome or normal bias selector. And then in 1991, they added another deck to that range of compact cassette decks. The one that records, which I've featured in a video years ago, the SCT-86. So that was the complete range of these mini cassette decks from Radio Shack. The SCP-32 Auto Reverse Play Only Deck. The SCP-31 Low Cost Playback Deck. And the SCT-86 Recorder Player on a Budget. The SCP-32 Auto Reverse Deck last appeared in the 1997 catalog, while the SCP-31 Playback Deck continued until 2000, and the SCT-86 Recording Deck lasted for one more year until 2001. And then it was replaced with the RCA SCT-510, which I've also done a video about. Like I said, this thing is filthy. These buttons are not supposed to look like that. That's just a lot of dirt in the little grooves in the buttons. And on the bottom it looks like somebody had this thing duct taped down to a counter somewhere. Unfortunately they ripped off the part of the sticker that would tell us when it was made. But sometime in the early 1990s, this was after they changed the brand from Realistic to Optimus, but otherwise it's the same thing. So it's just a standard piano key button playback only deck. It does have soft eject, which is nice. And a switch to select normal and chrome or metal playback equalization, although it does not have Dolby noise reduction. And on the back, the only thing besides the sticker is just the audio output and the power cord. And yes, it was made in China. The specifications for the SCP-31 aren't particularly impressive, as you would expect from such an inexpensive deck, but at least the wow and flutter is a reasonable 0.15%. There's the mechanism. It does have a stereo playback head, and it's your typical Tanishin style mechanism. Looks like it has seen quite a bit of use, because that pinch roller is looking rather glazed, but otherwise nothing really out of the ordinary. I have it plugged in and when I press play, you can see nothing's moving, neither the take up reel or the capstan. Same thing with fast forward and rewind. But when I engage any of the modes and hold my ear up to it, I cannot hear the motor. So instead of possibly just being bad belts, we may have a bad motor or some other kind of fault with this deck. Just as I suspected, it's a typical Tanishin mechanism. Looks like it was genuine Tanishin, judging by this part number stamped on it. And the belts are fine. Those belts seem to be perfectly fine. The motor is a Mabuchi EG530AD, 12 volt DC, 2400 RPM counterclockwise. Very typical cassette deck motor. And judging by that stamp in the cover, it is a genuine Mabuchi motor. Here's the circuit board. It has the power transformer, bridge rectifier, and a filter capacitor. And then all these electronics. Looks like most of it is in that shielded box to reduce hum and interference from getting into the audio. So very simple circuit layout and very simple mechanism. I think this could simply have a bad power transformer because here I have 120 volts AC coming into the primary and on the secondary absolutely nothing. 
And you may be wondering, did the power transformer burn out because we have a shorted rectifier? And I don't think so, because if I measure the secondary, it's measuring about 13 ohms, which sounds about right for the secondary of a power transformer, so it's not a dead short. The markings on the transformer don't indicate the output voltage, but I'm guessing 12 volts AC, considering that the motor is 12 volts DC. It does have a center tap secondary, but you can see that center tap is not used for anything. So what I'm going to do is just remove this built-in power transformer and this power cord and install this. It's a 12 volt AC power adapter. 300 milliamps should be perfectly fine for a cassette player. It doesn't need that much current to run. It has one of these connectors on it, but I can just cut that off and wire it in directly. This cheapo desoldering iron made quick work of removing the power transformer. And thankfully it wasn't too difficult to remove the old power cord from the strain relief, so I can reuse that. Here's the output of that 12 volt AC wall wart fed through the original strain relief and stuffed into the holes of the secondary of the original transformer. And yes, I did remember to snake it through the hole in the cover. And there it is, soldered into place. It's AC, so polarity doesn't matter. So, that's my modification to get this hopefully working again. Just remove the original dead power transformer and wire in an external 12 volt AC power supply going through the original strain relief onto the circuit board where the output of the original secondary of the transformer was. So I have it plugged in. We should have approximately 12 volt AC coming out of it here and 14.6 volts AC now the question is, what is coming out of the rectifier of this power supply on the board? So we should be able to take any ground on the circuit and measure it here. And we have 19 volts coming out of it. I don't know, that may be a little bit high, but we'll see. Yeah, I measured 16 volts going into that 12 volt motor, so I'm going to have to remove this and put in a 9 volt AC power supply. I replaced it with a 9 volt AC power transformer taken from a Hayes modem and now I have a much more reasonable 12.8 volts coming out of the rectifier. And when I engage play and measure the voltage on the motor itself 11.3. A little bit low compared to the 12 volts it's rated for but it should be perfectly fine. And there you can see the motor is spinning just fine with the original belts and I don't hear it whining or groaning or anything, so the motor seems to be perfectly fine. If we look inside, our take-up reel is spinning, so there's fast-forward, and there's rewind, which kicks off the auto-stop just like it should. So, looks like the only thing wrong with this was that power transformer. Now that I know that it's basically working, I clean the heads or head in this case because it's a playback only deck and capstan and pinch roller. I've shown that before in other videos so I didn't feel the need to show it again. To check the speed of the motor in this deck I'm going to use a little bit different of a method than I usually do. Instead of using a special program on my computer I have the line output of this deck connected to an audio amplifier. In this case it just happens to be another cassette recorder which I can monitor the input of through its built-in speaker. And I have my tablet running a frequency counter program. So I'll engage the recording monitor mode on this deck so we can hear what's coming through its input. Then I'll take my test tape, which has a 3 kilohertz tone on it, stick it in this deck, press play. And I don't think I need to do any adjustment because that's pretty damn close to 3 kilohertz, and it doesn't even sound like it has a lot of wow and flutter. If you're looking for the ultimate in stereo sound, you've found it. Here's how it works. Instruments and vocals are placed in their proper staging locations. Stereo imaging is improved, and a larger, more true-to-life sound field is created. The music takes on a new spatial quality. Tone bursts, resonant lows, sizzling highs, and dramatic passages seem to float in midair, 
and you are center stage, right in the middle of the performance. Listen. We will now pause for several seconds of fine music. Life's so full of circumstance Didn't think we had a chance But we got it all For always So there is the repaired $5 Radio Shack cassette deck. I still need to do a more thorough cleaning to remove this dirt from these grooves. But it doesn't look too bad. And the only sign of something being different is that instead of the original AC power cord, it now has this thinner wire going to the power adapter from a Hayes modem. I think what contributed to the demise of that original power transformer is that you may have noticed there is no power switch on this tape deck. As long as it's plugged in, that built-in power supply is putting out 12 volts DC. And as you saw from the duct tape residue on the bottom, I'm thinking this was probably permanently installed somewhere. So it was probably plugged in and had that power transformer powered on for many, many years until it eventually just burned out. So it's a good idea if you have any kind of audio device like, I know many turntables are the same way, where as long as it's plugged in, there's a power supply built into it that's powered on. You should unplug those, or at least put them into a switched outlet and turn them off when they're not in use. So while the tape heads are obsessing over their thousand dollar Nakamichi Dragons, I just had fun fixing up this cheap little Radio Shack cassette player that probably would have been thrown out if I hadn't rescued it and repaired it. I am a talking telephone and you can use me for your own. Make the wires sing or groan and tell a tale of woe. Any distance you can yell and tell a man to go to Well, most any place you wish him with a talking telephone 